राइट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ब्लड ब्रेन बैरियर राइट now what is blood brain barrier it's not something like a physical barrier as they are in the road and you cannot pass through uh, blood brain barrier is a basically concept which was originally originated uh, in 19 about 1882 by experiments of a doctor paul elric now what did he do actually he took live animals thank god animals right but even animal rights people will not be happy about it but what did he really do he took the live animals let's suppose here happens to be an animal right and and let's suppose here is the central nervous system of the animal right what did he do that he injected special type of dyes right in their vascular system right vital dyes vital dye to be very exact a uh, tripen blue tripen blue and this molecule of tripen blue now we know that basically it binds with the albumin or with the plasma proteins now dr paul elric he injected the live animals the living animals with vital dyes right in their circulatory system and then he tried to study that which organs of the animal are colored by the dye this was a blue color which organs of the animal turned blue what he really found that this injection of the blue dye right tripen blue uh, it colored almost everything in the body except central nervous system, system. all the tissues turned blue right and this blue dye approached all the tissues in the body but it failed to enter into central nervous system so he thought that there must be some sort of barrier between circulatory system and the central nervous system right and this was the origin of the concept of blood brain barrier this was a very primitive concept very initial concept that what is blood brain barrier that paul elric injected basically dyes in the vascular system of the living animals and then as these dyes were uh, protein binding dye and then he studied the distribution of the color in different tissues and what did he find that this blue dye was present in all the tissues almost all tissues but failed to enter failed to enter into central nervous system then he thought that it means there is some barrier between the blood and the brain and of course blood and the spinal cord also and later on we discovered similar barrier is present between not only between blood and brain but also present between blood and blood and spinal cord and also between the blood and peripheral nerves even this dye failed to color the internal side of the internal part of the peripheral nerves so truly now we believe this is not only blood brain barrier even though uh, in common language when doctors discuss they talk only about blood brain barrier but actually when we are talking about blood brain barrier we are talking about three things blood and brain barrier and also it's understood we are talking about blood and spinal, spinal cord barrier and similar barrier is present between the blood and peripheral nerves so blood and nerve barrier am i clear now the question is this okay mr paul elric uh, made trouble for us that now we have to study this initial discovery but as time went by and there were better techniques to study the uh, you can say this blood brain barrier to look at it what anatomically exactly it is and what structurally it is right now we know a lot about it right now we'll go into more advances and we'll talk about that what is exactly blood brain barrier what is that structure and how that structure work which prevent many substances from the blood to enter into central nervous system freely central nervous system is like a you know like a, what should i say one thing you know that central nervous system has lot of neurons and neurons are the master controller and regulator of the body and neurons are very sensitive just like ladies right overly sensitive and neurons like 
that approach to them should not be thoroughfare. Is that right? This neurons are like ladies, very, very sensitive and very specific. And they like to keep their private environment. And they want to keep a very stable environment. Not whatever fluctuations are going in blood should also come into their environment in the central nervous system. Right? So let's talk about that here is the neuron. And this neuron, this is the group of neurons here. Right? These are very, very sensitive. And everything from the blood should not reach there. There must be some barrier. Most of the women believe in barriers. Right? Sometimes they put emotional barriers, sometimes they push psychological barrier. In the same way, neurons have put a lot of barriers. We'll talk about that. But why? Why there is barrier? Why should be a barrier? The reason being that even though neurons have to get the nutrition from the blood and neurons have to release their waste product into blood, but still all fluctuations and all the drama of blood chemistry should not disturb the biochemical or microenvironment of the neurons in central nervous system. Right? For example, in the blood, hormonal fluctuation occurs very frequently. In, fa in, in fasting period, hormonal composition is slightly different. And postprandial, once you have eaten a lot of food, your hormonal composition in the blood is different. If you have done a lot of physical activity, your hormonal composition in the blood fluctuates. You know that about insulin, glucagon and other hormones. If you are under stress, again hormonal fluctuations occur. If a big black dog is after you, body surges a lot of norepinephrine in the blood. Is that right? So blood chemistry changes. As I told you, blood hormones change. But neurons sitting here, we can say ladies room, right? These neurons don't love every fluctuation should come there and disturb their special functions. Right? So there must be blood brain barrier. So one of the function of the blood brain barrier is, I will tell you later what exactly blood brain barrier is. But one of the function of the blood brain barrier is that it protects the extracellular environment in the neuron in the central nervous system the micro environment of the neuron or biochemical environment of the neuron or extracellular environment of the neuron it protect them from major fluctuations in the blood and not only protect actually it is responsible blood brain barrier is responsible to keep the neuronal environment stable relatively stable and neuronal environment should not be at the mercy of changes in the blood. Right? As I told you that if hormones are fluctuating in peripheral circulation, this, this should not reflect in the same degree of fluctuations in central nervous system. Right? If there are metabolites in the blood or glucose level in the blood fluctuate a lot. When you take food, amino acid level in the blood fluctuates a lot. In the fasting state and in the fed state but those fluctuations should not be that much to the central nervous system maybe to some degree then metabolites in the blood with exercise right their amount goes very high and resting period it become less again it should not border the private and discrete world of the neurons so one of the major function is that it is protecting the central nervous system microenvironment in which the neurons are working, right, to keep them into stable melee, stable environment, and protect central nervous system, extracellular environment from the fluctuating hormonal levels, metabolites levels in the peripheral blood, and even ionic levels, right? Because neurons love to have very stable level of sodium, calcium, potassium, right, magnesium, chloride, bicarbonate protons and there are relatively more fluctuations in the peripheral circulation so this is one purpose so we can say blood brain barrier act as a what stabilizer <coughs> it act as a stabilizer it stabilizes the it stabilizes the internal environment of central nervous system including brain and spinal cord right then it has one more function. Not only these ladylike neurons love to keep their environment relatively stable and, and relatively less fluctuating, they also want to be protected there. You know, ladies need more protection than men usually. Even though you, you come across sometimes very dangerous ladies. Another function is protection. Now, central nervous system, blood-brain barrier 
protected from toxins endogenous toxins or exogenous toxins right which are produced in the body endogenous toxins or if you have taken parenterally or some toxins you have taken uh, gastrointestinal system or some other way right there must be mechanism to protect the central nervous system from that so they have one more function for the not only stabilization it acts as a stabilizer blood brain barrier it also acts as a protector it protected from the toxins is that right even it protected from the toxic range of the drugs sometimes you give drugs all drugs don't enter into central nervous system selected drugs do enter right so protected from many many toxic drugs then it protected from the microbes also it protected from the microbe also especially particulate microbes like bacteria right for bacteria usually it's a little bit resistant to enter into central nervous system is that right then there is one more function not only it stabilizer of the micro environment in central nervous system not only it protected from the toxic substances endogenous like bilirubin or exogenous like neurotoxins another thing it's a very good holder <coughs> holder holding of what neurotransmitters in central nervous system in different regions you need very special concentrations of neurotransmitters somewhere for proper function of the brain at specific time you need glutamate in other area you need maybe norepinephrine still some other area you need serotonin and dopamine right and if there was no barrier between the blood and the central nervous system these neurons will so these neurotransmitters very very precious chemical substances will drain into blood and flush away into general circulation and how brain will keep the concentration of such neurons at appropriate level for functional purposes so blood brain barrier also help the central nervous system to hold the neurotransmitters within the central nervous system so it, they are not flushed away through circulation you know how much blood every minute passes through your central nervous system yes your brain looks quite active yes yes you are almost right actually about 15% 15% of the cardiac output passes from the central nervous system you know cardiac output usually in a resting person adult is about 5 liter per minute right so you can say about 700 to 800 ml blood you are almost right 700 to 8 ml blood right and when you are exercising of course cardiac output improves sometime during exercise even more than 1 liter blood passes through the central nervous system per minute and if there's no barrier neurotransmitter will be flushed away washed away do you think we will be happy man then or happy woman even no so what are the functions of blood brain barrier i have not yet told you what is blood brain barrier exactly i just told you hypothetically there is something which prevents the free movement of certain substances between the peripheral blood and the central nervous system environment and that something is called blood brain barrier we'll discuss exactly what it is but functions of this blood brain barrier are very important it provides a stable mi micro and molecular environment and biochemical environment to the neurons it provides protection to the neuron central nervous system and it helps the central nervous system to hold the neurotransmitters. neurotransmitters concentration am i clear but now we see exactly what is blood brain barrier right so we'll go to discuss that the structural details of the structure of blood brain barrier let's suppose he, here it happens to be your brain right it is just for teaching purpose it's an out of proportion this diagram but still let's suppose here is your general circulation right and this is the blood vessel which is passing through central nervous system and i will enlarge it so that you can understand it more clearly that blood is going of course from general circulation through you know carotid system and vertebral arterial system to the central nervous system and eventually uh, arteries go into arterioles and then eventually into capillaries right and then they drain back from the central nervous system to the venous channel back to the general circulation right so from here it comes out now the concept is that between 
blood here is the blood and here is what central nervous system extracellular environment between the blood and central nervous system there is a barrier and that barrier is here right now we are going to detail what it is right let's put, put some neurons here right these are the neurons right they are doing a lot of talking there as you know right so communicating synapses and all those activities right going on here and it should be very intimate environment and every all the adventure, adventurous activity here should not disturb it significantly the system should be so wise that the things which are really needed by the central nervous system should be able to transfer and which are not required should not be able to transfer right and here is the barrier now what is this barrier it's not a red line there let me tell you what it is actually blood brain barrier has multiple components right first i will tell you simple component the we should put a comparison between uh, capillaries in other tissues and capillaries in the brain right because these are the endothelial cells of the capillaries which provide the major function of the barrier now let's suppose we put a capillary how many types of capillaries are there there are continuous capillaries continuous capillaries there are fenestrated capillaries fenestrated capillaries and there are sinusoidal capillaries now continuous capillaries are those capillaries look here where endothelial cells don't have junctions between them like these are the endothelial cells and there are not between inter endothelial area there is not significant gap for the fluids to move so this is continuous capillary and it is having a, what is this basal lamina or basement membrane which is also continuous right then there are fenestrated capillaries now what is the difference in fenestrated capillaries fenestrated capillary is that the real difference is the real difference in continuous capillary and fenestrated capillary is between the endothelial cell structure the what is the structure that these endothelial cells are fenestrated these endothelial cells here these are fenestrated i will explain what is fenestrated right fenestrated now what are fenestration fenestration mean window window look at this wall in this wall let's suppose this wall is an endothelial cell this wall is endothelial cell and if there are round windows here round windows these round windows or holes these holes or pores or round windows are called fenestrations what are they called fenestrations so actually these endothelial cells they are having special type of you can say holes here and through this holes certain things can pass very easily and these are called endothelial windows we can also call them endothelial windows or we can call them endothelial fenestrations right now these fenestrations in some areas are really true windows for example in glomerular capillaries but in most of other fenestrated capillaries in the window there is a curtain there is a curtain there is a little diaphragm right so both of them are anyway called either there is only window or there is a window with curtain in both conditions if any endothelial cell has so many round windows through which uh, substances can easily pass then we say these endothelial cells are fenestrated and if there are cells that are endothelial cells are fenestrated then we say these are fenestrated capillaries but these continuous capillaries their endothelial cells don't have these pores or they don't have endothelial windows or they don't have the uh, what is this thing called uh, diaphragm with the endothelial windows so we say these are continuous so what is this what is the thing about the continuous or other name is continuous or tight capillaries right that their endothelial cells do not have fenestrations and interendothelial cell uh, gaps are also not there right classically continuous uh, epithelium uh, on classically continuous uh, capillaries are found in the central nervous system and endoneurum of peripheral nerve i mean brain and the spinal cord and nerves and continuous capillaries are also found in 
Yes. Continuous capillaries are also found in yes, my friend. Ah, you like to hide your knowledge, huh? Yes. You don't like to show off. Continuous capillaries are at many places, but at least you should remember muscles. Right? Muscles also have continuous capillaries. Uh, I mean muscles have capillaries where there are endothelial cells without fenestrations. In the muscles, endothelial cells are without fenestration. But in muscle, interendothelial gaps are little bit there. But in central nervous system, right, these continuous capillaries do not have interendothelial gaps. Is that right? These are fenestrated capillaries right then there are sinusoidal capillaries sinusoidal capillaries are where endothelial cells have lot of gaps and somewhere there are really deficient wall of the capillaries right uh, classically we can say it is in present in the liver and the spleen right in the liver and the spleen right and there are some reticular endothelial cells also there macrophages and other but i will not go into detail what really i wanted to tell you the body has three types of capillaries there are continuous capillaries there are fenestrated capillaries and there are sinusoidal capillaries Continuous capillaries have endothelial cells which are not fenestrated. Fenestrated capillaries have endothelial cells with multiple endothelial windows called fenestrated capillaries. And sinusoidal cells are really broken capillaries. Right? Now, yes, please, you have a question. Sir, the basement membrane is continuous. In the here it is continuous. Here it is a little bit broken. Here it is really big uh, in patches. Right? Now, we come to the endothelial cells, characteristics of the endothelial cells lining the capillaries of central nervous system right let's come here now if I draw endothelial cell here this is endothelial cell right and this is one more endothelial cell and here is one more endothelial cell now the first thing these endothelial cells have a very special thing because this is a private area women like to be behind the curtains and usually curtains also they like to stretch them more and more so what happened there are special stitches here there are special protein which stitch the what is this interendothelial gaps these gaps which are between the endothelial cell actually there are no gap they are very tightly stitched right there are special type of threads what are those threads? Those threads are basically special proteins called occludins and cloudins. Occludins, cloudins, and ZO1, and many others. You don't need to remember all of them. But you must remember that inter endothelial cells, which are lining the capillaries in central nervous system, right? These endothelial cells are very tightly stretched with each other. and Substances are not allowed to freely move in between the endothelial cell. Is that right? And this point where stitching is done, this is called, there are junctions between the one endothelial cell and other endothelial cell. There is a junction, but because junction is stretched, it becomes a tight junction. So we call them tight junctions. The classical most important thing, which is present in central nervous system vasculature, which act as a blood brain barrier is the tight junctions is that right this is the main reason why everything from the blood cannot jump into brain and everything from the brain cannot jump into here right so what is the site number one is tight junctions so let me now make this capillary a little bit larger that there are tight junctions and I will draw the capillary here, right? This is central nervous system capillary. And here is your, what is this? Endothelial cell. Here is an other endothelial cell and so on, so forth. And here are the stitching done. And what are these stitchings? Tight, Tight junctions. And they are made of special proteins. And these proteins are occludins and cloudins occludins and cloudins and ZO1 and some other also right and that is why at least one route through which usually passage occur is blocked now if I draw here here I'm not making central nervous system protein I'm making another type of 
Now, in this side, this is another capillary from somewhere else in the body. I'm comparing capillary from other part of the body with the capillaries in the central nervous system. This comparison. Now, here, number one, the stitches are not there. If the stitches are not there, then what will happen? Substances will be able to move through this. And if substances can move through this, right, this is called larger molecule or polar molecules. Polar molecules are those molecules which are highly charged, horny molecules, charged molecules, right? Or the molecules which are, you can say, water soluble molecule, right? If someone is very charged, dip him into water, right? So, what I'm talking about that these molecules which are larger, which are charged, which are we say water soluble right these molecules can easily pass through interendothelial gaps and this is called paracellular root what is this paracellular root of exchange between the vascular system and interstitial fluid but in central nervous system this paracellular root is effectively blocked is very effectively blocked by tight tensions this is the first most important thing. If you don't remember anything about blood brain barrier, just remember one thing. The, the major reason of this barrier between the blood and the brain is what? Tight junctions in endothelial cells lining the cerebral capillaries, the central nervous system capillaries. This is only one, but story doesn't finish here. You know, this is very discrete area. Extra protections are there. Actually, blood brain barrier is a sort of neuroprotective layer protecting the central nervous system private environment now there are other reasons there's another route through which substances pass from the blood extracellular area and in the blood and that route in other capillaries is, is through the cells that is through the cell when substance passes through the cell it is called transcellular route and this is paracellular route now in transcellular route there are many ways one of the ways that endothelial cell let's suppose this is an endothelial cell transcellular how it can do that it can make a little what is this depression and substance which need to be transferred that will be taken into this pit and then this will move a little inward and now substance is in a vesicle in a vesicle and then this vesicle may fuse on the other side and this substance will release out so here it entered there it went out but it passed through a vesicular system many epithelial cells right which endothelial cells in the many tissues they are having special type of transport from the endothelial cell from one side to other side that special vesicle are formed on one side right depressions in which proteins or larger molecules which are supposed to be transported are trapped are attached and then this vesicle these tip these pits or depressions they become deeper convert into vesicle and vesicle are transported to the other side of the endothelial cell until vesicle fuse with the cell membrane on the other side and its content are thrown out and this is called transcytotic vesicular transport what is it called transcytotic vesicular transport is that right and the here do you think such kind of transcytotic vesicular transport should be very effective in these cells? No. Just ask any women. This should not be like this. That men sit in the, what is his, uh, drums and pass in. So this drum business should not be there. So this is another important reason. The, why blood brain barrier is there? Not only because paracellular root is blocked by the tight junctions, but also in central nervous system, endothelial cell show very little vesicular transport but other capillaries show a lot of transcellular transport through the vesicular system this is the second reason then there is another thing 